Okay. Hi, Laura. Hello. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited to see you. It's been, gosh, when did you finish your mastership? Yes, yeah, so I finished in April 2020. Oh my God, it's nearly 12 months now. I know. I know. Wow. <laughs> it's gone so fast. Um, I'm really excited to talk to you because you've had such a unique journey and um but also you've got such an incredible story to share about just some of the challenges that you faced and some of the stuff that we worked through and um i i really feel like it's so inspiring and the best thing is you came into learning reiki just doing it for yourself mm -hmm. just like oh yeah i'll just see where this goes <laughs> And I'll get you to talk more about this, but not once did we really talk about seeing clients. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. just when we were talking then, I'm like, how's it going at the clinic? Because you're now seeing clients and you're like, oh, my God, people are booking in. <laughs> <laughs> so it's such a beautiful story and just um, in really just surrendering and letting go and just allowing whatever is meant to come through to, to really flow through in your life, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, totally. Yay. Do you want to start just by talking a little bit about what was going on in your life? And I guess what, what attracted you in a, you know, what, what was it about Reiki that appealed to you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I started learning Reiki in 2018. And so at that point in my life, um, I had gone through a breakup a few months before. And so I was feeling really, really lost. Um, I felt like I'd kind of lost my sense of self a bit. So um, I was doing lots of personal development work, lots of self-care, lots of reading, workshops, um, sound healing, just kind of doing all the things that, that felt good. And I felt were really were pulling like pulling me and I was yeah I was just getting this pull to do all this work um, and so in that I um, I was deepening my meditation practice and I did a vipassana course a 10-day retreat and in that um, in that course um, I really was able to feel my energy body my, my energetic body so I really kind of had an idea about how how energy works so when I saw that you were offering um Reiki um to learn to learn Reiki I I kind of was just like yep yep um that's what I'm gonna do it kind of just made made sense um so yeah I just really felt the pull just to start learning Reiki I'd had a few sessions before um, with other healers and always found it to be a very inspiring experience and always left feeling amazing and you know what was that what just happened um, so being able to learn it myself um, just felt like the next the next step yeah that's awesome I love that um you know you just followed that pool like oh I'm I'm feeling like I want to learn more about energy and I'm just, I'm just going to go with this and just trust, just trust that it's going to take me where I need to, to go. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Um, and I feel like that was really the approach that you had throughout your entire Reiki journey, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Always just curiosity. I think just, just following, okay. I'm, I don't know why, but I, I need to do this or I need to learn this and just, yeah, always just following what felt what felt good or what felt made me feel inspired or connected. Um, so yeah, that that was that kept coming up, I guess, throughout my my journey. And even now, I still feel that. So yeah, it's yeah. so good. It's so I love that you've just adopted that now. I was like, yeah, this is just my way of life. I'm just gonna follow yeah. what no <laughs> yeah it's just like tuning into my intuition. Yeah. And that's a massive thing for me. I think for a while I felt really blocked. I couldn't feel myself. I couldn't feel my feelings. I couldn't, or like I'd feel, oh, that doesn't feel right, but I'd override it and be like, I'll do it anyway. It doesn't feel right. Like I didn't know that my feelings were actually indicators of what I need to follow. I didn't put that together. So I think learning Reiki and meditation and learning, a, like feeling my body, I was really able to tune into that um, at a deeper level. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's so interesting you talk about that feeling because um, so many healers, you know, so many people who practice Reiki are understand that they are clairsentient, you know, that they actually feel sensation and feel vibration and energy in their body. And, um, and I know I've seen it firsthand in classes where students are so sensitive to the energy in, in terms of actually feeling their sensations and they have no idea until they come into a class and they practice Reiki on themselves or another person. They're like, Oh my God, I could feel, I could feel them. I could actually feel whatever was going on in their stomach or their back or their, I could feel that, um, you know, horrible emotion or the tightness in the chest, or I could, I could actually feel their sensations. And um, it's incredible to be able to have that awareness about yourself, isn't it? When you, when you start tapping into that, into that work. Mm -hmm. yeah totally yeah and for like for myself and you know following my own my own intuition but yeah now I guess seeing seeing clients as well um I can pick up on what they're feeling so I can I have like a really kind of clear understanding of what's what's going on in them or energy wise yeah so that's been really really amazing I think like what a gift to be able to tune into your intuition like that (laughs) So beautiful. Such an incredible and powerful gift. Absolutely. Yeah. And now you know that there's another side of you that can, um, that you can listen to, you know, it's not just about waiting for the visual cues or waiting for, you know, it, there's, there's so much more to your intuition than, than maybe what you, what you would have thought, you know, originally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So good. So good. So you've just talked about, I guess, the the intuition and feeling a bit blocked and stuff. Do you want to share some of the other challenges that you faced? Um, not just through, you know, your um, Reiki mastership, but just in general, maybe what you, what you've, um, what you faced and if any of those sort of changed as well over the, over the time. Yeah. Yeah. So I faced a lot of a lot of challenges I think um a lot of fears so I think at the start when I was when I was learning Reiki I had a lot of insecurities come up a lot of um self self self-judgment um a lot of worrying about what other people would think oh what you know what's right why are you learning Reiki like I had a bit of a bit of that going on a bit of imposter syndrome um so I think I was able to kind of work through those by just again tuning into my my heart and what felt good and what felt true for me because if it feels true for me then that's an indicator that that's you know I'm on the right path so I was able to kind of you know push all the the other stuff aside um so yeah initially those were those were my challenges and then I think um the the biggest fear that I or the biggest challenge that I overcame or came to accept was my obsessive compulsive disorder, um, which I've, um, yeah, I guess I've, I've talked a little bit about, about before, but I feel really passionate about talking more about it because um, it's a very misunderstood disorder. Um, and a lot of people have it and they don't know, they don't know that they have it or they don't know that, that it's treatable. Um, and so, yeah, that was a huge thing for me in accepting that I had this um, challenge to work through. And um, for me um, personally, this manifested as intrusive thoughts, which were um, very scary, very dark, um, and were all about me hurting people, all about violence, abuse, basically anything taboo. And that was very confronting, um, accepting that that was part of me, part of my reality. and, you know, coming face to face with that through, throughout my journey. Um, yeah, I guess it was, it was such a challenge, but being able to work through that has been such a, a gift as well. Um, you know, I feel like I've learned so many tools throughout this process. Um, 
you know, I've, I, I guess at the, that kind of, it's, it's a, feels like it's a really big multifaceted story as I'm sure like all stories are, but um, I guess basically for me, when I started my mastership, I also started seeing a psychologist that specialized in OCD at the same time. So it was really important to me to kind of have both um, modalities to kind of work through. Um, I did a lot of um, a psychoeducation with my psychologist, a lot of exposure therapy. Um, and so that was really great, but I have this whole spiritual side of me and, you know, that was a really big part. So being able to kind of integrate those two and with Reiki, you know, learning about the, the inner child, doing lots of shadow work, lots of shadow integration. <laughs> um, and then you know, the Reiki, I guess really helped me open up to that unconditional love and to know what unconditional self-acceptance is and what it feels like. And, you know, that, that for me personally was my journey in um, accepting myself, accepting all of me. Um, so yeah, it is, it is a, um, it's a big, yeah, I guess it's a big, big topic, but I feel like, for ages I couldn't talk about it and I couldn't talk about I couldn't talk about my Reiki journey as well because I thought I can't talk about my Reiki if I don't talk about having OCD and like all of that stuff and I felt really um, a lot of shame about it and it's been through my my healing and you know my acceptance that I have been able to bring all of that to light and be able to talk about it and um, you know, hopefully that gives other people permission or, you know, feel comfortable to talk about their challenges as well, because that's such a massive part of, of mental health. And I've been I've been in the mental health or well-being scene for, for years now. So I know that that this is a huge part of it. So. So, yeah. Um. <laughs> so powerful and so inspiring, Laura. Um, you're absolutely right. Like, I think feeling shame about the shadow, right, the parts of ourselves that we don't necessarily want to acknowledge, um, we wish they just, it would just go away, um, the parts of ourselves that we don't want anyone else to know about us, right? We don't want them to because we're so fearful that if they caught a glimpse into who I really was, right, and this is where that imposter syndrome comes from or oh, I don't have all my shit together, like how can I possibly show up for somebody else and who am I to do that for someone if I don't have, you know, if I'm not perfect, right, mm -hmm. and um, we, we really are great in society for, I guess, um, celebrating people who are doing well and and you know who are who are moving forward and all that sort of stuff but we don't often just um honor the time in between which is that that transition and that healing time where we are we are coming to that space of this radical self-acceptance this unconditional self-acceptance of um yeah this is this is who i am and I'm going to find a way not to dismiss it, not to suppress it and not to hide it away because it's not a shadow. You know what I mean? It is, it is the part of us. It is a part of who we are. And, and Reiki really does allow us to shine. That's what it is. It's shining that light, right, and, and reconnecting us to, to our whole self, our whole truth. And we get to this space and now, you, you know, you're, you're at this space now where you can completely just shine in your, in your wholeness, in your light and say, yeah, this is, this is who I am. And, and I, I'm here for, I'm still here showing up for other people, but I'm also showing up for myself and, mm -hmm. um, and still doing the work and, and, you know, I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect, but um, you're committed. You're so committed to loving your whole self and, and when you're committed like that, you can't help but radiate. You cannot mm -hmm. help but radiate. And that's exactly what you do. And um, as your vibration is raised, you, you just invite others into your space. And it's so powerful. Thank you so much for sharing that mm -hmm. story and for the, for the work that you're doing and that you're um, and the stories that you're continuing to share as well. It's, it's really powerful. It's really, really powerful. 
Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And it feels, um, yeah, it feels really good to have the opportunity to be able to talk about this stuff and, you know, be able to use my voice. That was a whole nother thing throughout my whole Reiki journey. My blocked, my blocked throat chakra, like I just <laughs> really struggled to talk and to speak my truth and to say what I want, what I need and, um, you know, to ask for help, to be vulnerable, like all of these things. It was uh, really massive. So I feel like I've, I've been presented with so many opportunities to kind of break that pattern and to choose another way. And, um, and I'm, I'm grateful for that, you know, whatever, wh however it, it, um, it came about, it was um, a, a path that I had to take to, to get me to where I am now. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It's so good. Um, and now I guess looking back on that, um, you can, you can sit back and you can say, oh, okay, I know, I understand now that these are the little, these were the steps that um, universe was guiding me along, right? This was, this is exactly where I needed to go in order to get to where I am right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. And it just gives me so much trust. Like I just feel like, yes, it's hard. It's, you know, no one wants to go through shit times. Like, but trusting that, you know, when we, when we can take that step or, um, you know, that commitment to our, our self and our growth and our, our own self love, then we can kind of push through those fears. And um, I guess I really felt that with the Reiki at like a experiential level, you know, like feeling it for myself. I, oh, okay. Like <laughs> this is what, this is what's happening or this is what it's about. So um, yeah, so much trust now. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I think as well, um, you know, you can feel you, you not once did you ever show up and say, like in our sessions, I remember, I, I remember you had some really challenging times. Like I remember there were some weeks, I mean, we were doing a rapid, um, you know, program together. You, you were coming to see me weekly and, I remember there were there were some of those weeks where they were really dark for you, and um, and I remember just saying to you, you you just need to feel through this, right? Like it's just you just need to try and you just need to try and enjoy this and try to be with it and be present with it because um, the worst thing that you can ever do is try to numb it or try to try to get rid of it. And um, not once did you do that. No, and and like honestly that is so powerful and you should be so proud of yourself and just to be able to stand now on the other side and go yeah I didn't like try to ignore it like I actually <laughs> I went in there and I went with all my tools and I was and I you know did my best to to try to weather the storm and I did you, you absolutely did yeah yeah totally and I think that was as because I knew that it didn't have to be like that. Like I knew that there was another way of being. And I was like, no, I'm not gonna live like this. I'm not gonna live in this fear and this pain. Like I know, so I'm just like, you know, crawl, <laughs> crawling my way through to the other side. Um, yeah, and I remember, I remember when you said, when you said, try not to hate it so much. Cause I'm like, these intrusive thoughts, oh, like, uh, like I just, you know, I was actually, I was hating it all. I was hating myself. And when you said that, like, that was one of the most powerful things for me. I was like, oh, shit, I am hate, like, I am hating it. Like, maybe I can loosen my group a little bit. Maybe I can, um, one of my meditation teachers once said, in, instead of letting, letting go, why don't you just let it be? Just let it be. And so just coming back to that and just letting it be, that acceptance, like, that's what really kind of helped me. Um, help I guess support supported me through that process oh, that is so great I love that just let it be it's so it's so true because there is there's always going to be another time where you look back and you are going to be so grateful for your experience you're mm. you know it, it's always a choice that we make in the moment right you can always choose to hate something or or to try and ignore it or wish it away or you can try to just be in the moment and and try to just learn from it or accept it or, or whatever the fact is that it's 
presented to you either way. So you get to make the choice. Right? Exactly. And it's like a choice of perception, isn't it? You know, which way do you want to choose? What feels better? What, you know, go with the perception that feels better. So that's, yeah, that's, and then again, like listen to my feelings. Okay. No, it does feel better to this. So why not choose that way? <laughs> yes. Why not? Why not? <laughs> I love it. So good. So good. Um, so now you, I mean, we talked a lot about um, some of the challenges that you faced and really it was personal. I think maybe you were practicing Reiki on a couple of friends and stuff like that, weren't you, in a bit of family and things, but um, nothing too serious. And I think you once asked me about, oh, so if I did want to practice, <laughs> that kind of look like <laughs> um but now you are so talk to us a little bit about that like how did you even make I know this is going to resonate with a lot of people um firstly because I get asked this question so I'm going to ask you Laura how did you know that you were a light worker that you had to work with other people and you had to share this with other people and the second question I have for you is how did you do it how did you start okay so yeah, I guess my, when I was learning Reiki, it was all for myself, my personal healing. And I think, yeah, as you were saying, I was practicing on friends and family and, um, and then um, actually I did a lot of um, Reiki shares with the other students um, in, in um, Nourished Energy community. And I, when I, I finished, cause I finished my mastership in April, it was a uh, lockdown time. So that was a great opportunity to do lots of distance healing. So um, I, I was doing lots of distance healings, receiving healings. And I just was like, there's just something to this. Like, I just, I can't not do this. Like I felt, uh, yeah, I wasn't, wasn't, didn't know if I wanted to be a practitioner, but I guess going through that and feeling the effects of it and, you know, being able to help people at that soul level or, you know, a deeper level, it just resonated with me. And ever since like I did my, my level one, I remember everything we talked about. I was like, like, I felt like I'd been there before, had that feeling like, oh, I know this, like, I know all this. Um, so it just really resonated with me. And then, yeah, so just doing, doing my own healings, feeling, um, or hearing about other people's experiences after I'd done a healing, I, I, I was like, I've, I need to share this with people. Ah, what am I going to do? <laughs> and I guess breaking it down to like really simple, like getting all of my ego and everything out of the way, I just thought to myself, okay, so I've been through this attunement process. I've been attuned. I am, I'm just channeling. All I'm doing is just channeling the Reiki. That's all I need to do because everything else is just stories that I tell myself, oh, I can't do this. I'm impossible. Blah, blah, blah. They're just stories. So if I just break it down, okay, I'm just going to channel it and trust and know that it's for the highest good. Then I kind of just, that fear just kind of evaporated. Like it was really amazing. I was like, oh, well now I've got to do this because this is, you know, I've been through this. Yeah. So it just kind of was a natural unfolding, if that makes sense. That's so good. Um, I love that you've just, you just come back to that and know that I, the, the reality is, is that you are Reiki, right? You are Reiki and you know this, and this is exactly how you're working in that. Yeah. I don't actually need to be anything other than Reiki. And I just mm -hmm. need to connect with my truth. Right. And your essence, your truth is love and that's mm -hmm. Reiki. Mm -hmm. And so as long as you are, just in that yeah like you said everything else just falls away it's like oh there's another ridiculous thought that <laughs> I'm not smart enough or good enough or whatever enough or you know that um uh, that you know what are people going to think about this or whatever and it's like all that just it's like it has no space in that infinite space of mm -hmm. unconditional love there's there's it's like that kind of low vibrational Mm -hmm. thoughts and feelings and fears and all that bullshit just has no there's no access in there yeah. in that field 
it's like zoop, no it's closed yeah. off to all that sorry <laughs> high five only <laughs> so yeah it's, it's really powerful it's really really powerful so yeah just always coming back to that and you're right just again it's just about making that choice and that decision that I need to do this and as soon as you step into that power you would have felt this as soon as you said that as soon as you said yes universe just started presenting it to you didn't it <laughs> yeah. yeah like she's ready she's ready yeah. let's go and I'm like oh am I ready okay if the universe thinks I'm ready I'm ready okay <laughs> oh so good so good so you are people can find you on um at prana prana house yeah in Thornbury. Yeah, um, but also available for distance healings. Yes, yes. which are which you absolutely love, I know, as well yeah. as the in person sessions. Um, and your, I'm gonna post all your socials and and stuff on um on here as well, so people can can um get in touch with you if they need to. Oh, yeah. But um, if you had, I guess, if you had any advice for someone who's just starting on their journey or interested in learning Reiki um can you can you what would you say to them if you're feeling that pull go for it like I don't think you can really go wrong with self-development and that's what I view this whole journey as personal development you know taking blocks like fears out of the way um and particularly like the, the mastership is it's it's each session is a healing and a coaching, like it's very transformational. And I think um, like it was so amazing to be guided by you as well, Loretta, because you, you held me in the highest light and, you know, and I really felt that and I really felt so supported the whole time. And I think, you know, because you had gone through your own struggles as well, you really knew what I was going through. And I think that really helped because I really, um, I really felt heard and seen by you and um, you were like an anchor point for me, you know, I'd come in some days like, oh, this is, you know, and you just, by the end of the session, I just felt so more in my power, my power. And I was, yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing. So if anyone's thinking about it, why not? Like, <laughs> Go for it. Oh, thank you so much, Laura. And um, God, I just love talking to you. You can, um, I'm sure anyone who listens to this or watches it can see just how deep our sessions used to go sometimes and how profound. I think we were often um, just like solving all the world's problems yeah. like, <laughs> on a very deep and spiritual level. It was so always such such beautiful times and I love still our sessions even even now mm. and and working with you too it's so beautiful yeah. thank you so much Laura thank you thank Mwah. you so much love you <laughs> you too bye bye